Would you talk about booze for a moment? If you like. As a kind of maybe public service or, or whatever. Um. I think I've done enough public service in that direction. <laughs> However, if it helps anybody, yes. Uh, well, yes. I, I, it, it might very well. Um, I guess what, what I want to know is how, how do you know when you're in trouble? If you're, I think if you're, that nobody quite knows uh, which drink it is that takes him over the edge of being merely a social or hearty, laughing drinker into a morose and hungover wretched creature who shakes and creaks and sweats and has nightmares and it's always November and it's raining and it's three o'clock in the morning and, and there's nowhere to go and you reach out for a cigarette and smoke and think of all the horrible things you've done in your life and all the shame you've all the shames you've endured and suffered and the shame you gave other people and the, all the wrongs you've done other people. I don't know whether alcoholics can put it quite as eloquently as that usually. They, they just say, I just stared out of a window for two years. <laughs> and um, it is, I believe me, uh, the question of uh, being an alcoholic, I'm not quite sure that I am one, but if I'm not one, I'm very near. I'm very on, uh, right on the edge of being one. Do tell but it is no laughing matter. It really <coughs> no. is not a laughing matter. Uh, alcoholism is, is a dreadful disease. Mm. And my sympathy for, I believe there are something like 15 million Americans alone who are, who are alcoholics. And my sympathy for them and my affection for them is mm. profound. They come up to me. Uh, you know, as, as, as being a representative figure of this <laughs> dreadful disease, and mm -hmm. and one of the one of the things they love to do is to tell stories about what they got up to when they were drunk, and I listen and I laugh, and they genuinely funny some of the stories, but it is a tragic disease and a, a dreadful one, and uh, I, I think well, no, I can't say that I've beaten it because. Mm -hmm. As Jimmy Breslin, who was a dear friend of mine, wrote me a, a short but very eloquent letter once, some years ago, when I was in trouble with drink. And he said, don't forget the drink. And he used the, the, the analogy of a boxing match, and that you're always fighting. You're always fighting. And the other fella is booze and you evade him, you evade him, but one of these days, unless you're careful, he's gonna nail you right on the chin, and down you go. So it's a continual fight. Every day, it's a fight. And when you get through the day, and you finally put your head on the pillow, and you sleep, you say, I've beaten that boxer for an, yet another day. another day. And so for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. you're stuck with that shadowy figure, always, always coming at you, always coming at you. And there is every conceivable excuse. Take a drink. I got a bad note, so I take a drink. I got a good note, so I take a drink. Mm -hmm. As to a, one would, if, um, if you didn't have uh, my particular self-control and, of course, mm -hmm. the enormous assistance of my wife. Yeah. Um, without, uh, without Susan, I think, uh, uh, without any um, exagger exaggeration whatsoever, I, I might very easily be dead. I'm, I'm not joking, I mean that. Yeah. When I played Equus in New York four years ago, it was the first time in my life I'd ever been on the stage without a drink. And I shook and I shivered, and she knew, Susan knew, and I had, as you know, an enormous success in that. And um, the audiences were fantastically kind, and they gave me standing ovations and all that, but every night we never knew if I'd crack. Mm -hmm. And never once, for instance, did she hide the booze or anything like that. There was a bottle of vodka and there was a bottle of gin right in the dressing room. All I had to do was open the door and there it was. Yeah. And it was, uh, it took, I was in it for 12 weeks. Uh, and one performance which uh, Tony Perkins very kindly gave me mm. on a Saturday matinee to, to uh, sort of run me in before anybody <coughs> knew I was going to be in it, uh, that I was opening. Uh, so uh, we counted the performances. It's the only time. I don't count them in Camelot because I'm over that, yeah. over that hurdle. 
Uh, but he's still there. That fellow's yeah. still there. And uh, all I can say is to anybody in this country or in the world who has the same problem, you have my deepest sympathies, and I hope you have a wife like mine. That's all. <laughs>